Hey guys, what is up? I have a crazy video for you guys. I have put a lot of work into it. I've been working on it for the last three or four weeks. What I did is I took this A7 IV, oh, I took the A7 IV out and I used it in every possible way that I use a camera. I was like, I don't wanna just sit here and talk about the camera. I wanna get out there and I wanna use the camera. Without further ado, here is me using this camera in like a whole bunch of different ways. Let's go. I'm gonna do some night street photography. Got the a7 IV, 40 millimeter f1.8 lens, shooting tungsten white balance so everything will be nice and blue. Let's have some fun. I mapped the AF on button to a spot focus hold. I don't know if that was in the A7 III. If it was, I should have done it a long time ago, but I'm loving this because I can point the camera at a light or something that I want to expose at, hit one button, hold that exposure, and then move around and take a bunch of photos using the autofocus, which is perfect. One of the things that I'm loving about this camera is I'm able to hold this vlogging camera and walk and take street photos at the same time, which is pretty crazy because the autofocus is so good. I can get that exposure like I was talking about with my thumb. I can go and watch. I can go grab an exposure off of a bright light. So it darkens everything down and boom, just start taking photos. It's pretty crazy. Now I'm on the A7C. I'm kind of excited to compare the two. This is my attempt to do the exact same settings but now I'm on the a7 IV, same lens. It's the 20 millimeter F1.8 Sony. Standard picture profile, took away all the sharpness, desaturated it a little bit. It's what I do on the a7C. Didn't turn on any image stabilization. I'm shooting 4K, 100 megabit. Now I am shooting in the famed new Cinetone profile and I've turned on active image stabilization. And now I'm shooting at a 4K 422 10-bit, so I've cranked up the quality. Why don't you guys tell me in the comments if you think this looks better than the other stuff, what works for you guys, what doesn't work. Obviously, I'm enjoying having a front flip-out screen right now because I'm able to vlog. I'm not using the Joby right now, and what I'm finding pretty good, actually, is because the grip is a little bit bigger. It's uh, pretty easy to hold facing this way, which is, which is kind of cool. I think this might be a good place. Play around with slow motion. I'm just gonna try the famed 4K 60 FPS with crop. See what it looks like. The crop is not a huge deal for me. I don't have any specific applications where I really need slow motion. I shoot B-roll a lot for vlogs. That could be tighter and that looks cool. I'm gonna try the uh, 120 frame HD now and see what that looks like. For some reason, when you're in 4K 60 FPS in S&Q, you can turn on active image stabilization. You cannot do that when you're shooting 120 HD. You can just do standard stabilization. I don't think it's a huge deal. The new menus are as good as everyone says. Yeah, this is, uh, this is impressive. Another way I'm gonna use my A7 IV is on set during my day job as a visual effects supervisor for something I like to call a quick scan. A quick scan is when I basically pull an actor off to the side, have him stand very still, and I run around him a bunch taking a bunch of photos that I can take into a program in post-production on my computer and turn into a 3D model. One thing that made this a whole lot better was having the flip screen. I was able to adjust the flip screen as I was videotaping him and it just made life a lot easier. Sometimes I also scan entire 
buildings or even city blocks. Yeah, you can take a camera like the a7 IV. I'm using this Tamron 17 to 28, pretty much at 17 millimeters the whole time. I'll go to a location that we're gonna shoot at maybe like a week or two before we're gonna be there. You just go around and take a whole bunch of photos of a city block, toss it into a photogrammetry program like Metashape, and boom, you can have a pretty decent model of a street corner in a couple of hours. I use this stuff all the time in visual effects, mostly for previs or like having Zoom meetings and showing people different angles and things like that that you're gonna film at, like virtual location scouting. So uh, let's do it, man. Let's uh, take some photos. Front flippy screen is helpful for weird angles. Making a horseshoe around the whole block. crossing the street, I'll just like start hosing it down with photos like while I'm moving. High shutter speed, shouldn't be any motion blur. The more angles, the merrier. Just make sure they're in focus and consistent. I think I did a pretty good job. I kinda did it a little faster than usual, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Let's see what it looks like. I am here with my guinea pig test subject, Robert Fleet. Hello. Uh, also known as my father, Robert Fleet. We are gonna be doing portrait photography. I have a uh, Godox portable strobe, little Godox portable uh, softbox, a Manfrotto stand here. I've got this X Pro S Godox Commander that I've used on my A7 III. And uh, we'll just shoot some really quick, simple studio stuff. Nothing fancy, but I think it'll look pretty good. remote commander needs to be firmware upgraded and the connection's been a little janky so I'm hoping maybe Sony comes out with their own firmware update or something there's no reason why this shouldn't work as good as it does on the a7 III also I've gone in the menu and I've tried to turn off the setting where it just stays bright all the time once this is on there and that doesn't seem to be working a quick hack is I can just turn this off to see my exposure without like some kind of fake Sony exposure thing going on I think this is gonna be a great camera for portrait stuff. Just gotta work out a few of the kinks with this guy. I'll dig into it further in the future, but it does work and I'm very happy with it. Sometimes I get tasked with shooting establishing plates for TV projects that I work on. You know those shots like when you're outside a building and it tells you where you are before you go inside the building and have the scene? I actually shoot some of those sometimes. Why shoot it on a little camera like this and not a big professional camera? Well, establishing plates usually involve a lot of visual effects. Placing signs, changing the looks of buildings, things like that. It's usually better for me to just go out there and get the elements myself for visual effects than make a whole big production out of it. Now typically when you shoot these plates, they're video, they're not stills, because you want some kind of movement in them. With the four, I can shoot, this is a mouthful, S-Log3, S-Gamut Cine 422, 10-bit 4K at 24p, all I, whew, also known as Picture Profile 8. Oh yeah, and one more thing, when you're shooting in S-Log, you can now shoot at a base of 200 on the a7 IV as opposed to a base of 800 on the 3 or the a7C. That means a lot better looking footage in bright sunny conditions where you're not forced to have to ND it down. I think actually that might be one of the biggest upgrades is that ISO jump. And everything that I need to film a high quality plate fits right here. This is a huge technical upgrade for me, and to be perfectly honest, this was the one reason, the one thing that tipped me into purchasing this camera instead of just sticking with my a7 III. Probably the number one thing that I use a camera for is shooting photos on set when I'm visual effects supervising. We just have to shoot a ton of reference of everything, anything that could become visual effect. Things like assigned parking numbers or signs. And I also like to shoot uh, close-ups and like flat planes of texture. It's just so good to get textures. I would wanna take tons of photos the day we're shooting when all the lights are set up. I'm gonna use a standard mid-range zoom, like my Tamron 28 to 75 here. Don't wanna shoot wide open, so I'm gonna shoot in an F4. And then I'm gonna switch my ISO to auto, kinda see how high it's going maybe uh, take some photos around here, some various textures and stuff like that. Pretty straightforward stuff, but let's see, uh, let's see what they look like. Here 
sensor. One of the problems I would have on the a7 III, sometimes when it was really dark, it'd be hard to grab autofocus, but this camera seems to be doing a, a bang up job of just grabbing anything that I pointed to. I'm actually out of tape, so time to, uh, time to go. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of B-roll and uh, see what that looks like on this camera. I like to do slow-mo close-ups of products that I'm talking about on YouTube. I like that I'm able to dial in the shutter very specifically on the a7 IV, something I couldn't do on the a7 III. These lights that I use, these Hue lights, get a lot of flicker if I'm at the wrong shutter, but I was able to dial it in and get rid of the flicker, which I think is great. I love, love, love the anti-flicker shutter. And the fact that I can do slow motion in 4K is just awesome. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm digging this thing. So here I am on the a7 IV. I have it plugged in through USB-C. You can't do 24 frames a second when you output this way from this camera. So if I look a little bit jerky, first off the good. It's easy. You just plug in the cable and it's gonna pop up a little menu on the screen of the camera and say, how do you wanna use this? I said, use it as a webcam and boom, that was it. It seems like the USB is charging the camera. There was a setting in there to allow it to charge and it seems to be doing that. I think this is a really great zoom travel solution for me. The stuff I don't like so much about this is it's the frame rates. My dream wish would be more than even a 4K option would be a 24P option. The 4K is only 15 frames a second, which is basically useless. The USB-C cable seems to plug in directly in front of the screen when it's flipped forward towards you. For some reason, when you're using it as a webcam, it turns off creative picture profiles. I don't know why, but you can't use them. And so yeah, it makes a really cool webcam. It's somewhat limited in use, but it is useful and it's easy and it's gonna be great for travel. I mean, who doesn't want to take photos of their furry little friends, right? I've created a preset using the Animal AF feature, which is brand new in this camera over the a7 III. Loving it so far. I'm able to latch onto this little guy's eyes really easily. Kind of can use whatever lens, high shutter speed, continuous shooting, just take millions and millions of photos of my cat. And honestly, I'm not ashamed of it. So let's, uh, let's do it, snake. I could do this forever, but uh, I've only got so much space on my chip, so uh, time to move on to the next thing. And scene. So that was like, uh, so that was like 10 different ways that I just used the Sony a7 IV. There's probably another 10 ways I could still use it, but I gotta stop this video at some point. <sighs> I'll tell you this, the best thing about making this video was getting out there and using the camera. Cause I can sit and I can tinker with settings all day long and like theorize on the best ways to use it. But getting out there, succeeding and failing, all that stuff was really, really helpful. Basically, I think I deduced what everyone already knows. This is a great camera. It's amazing. It's a big upgrade from the a7 III. For me, the video quality alone makes it worth it. It's just amazing where technology is right now. So I hope you guys love this video. Video. If you did, subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends about this channel. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the a7 IV or want any additional a7 IV content. That's it. Time to go work on the next thing. I will see you later.